friends, my beautiful, talented, compassionate, intelligent, sexy friends. Before we talk about what mental illness is, I think it's very important to talk about what mental illness is not. You understand what I'm saying? I suffer from two mental illnesses. One is bipolar type 2. And the other one is clinical depression. Why do I make such a big fucking noise about that first word, people? Why? Why do I go clinical depression? Why? Because anyone can get depressed. Your cat dies, you're fucking depressed. That's a legitimate, valid feeling. That's how you feel. You are depressed. You go into a depression and then you come back out. Clinically depressed people, on the other hand, lack a chemical in our brain. That chemical is responsible for regulating emotion. Okay? So, I have woken up in the morning, soaked in the kind of grief and hatred and anger that comes from a terrible injustice or the death of a loved one for no fucking reason except that I woke up. That's depression. That's clinical depression. I've also felt my moods swing pendulum wildly from too fucking manic and too full of ideas to just, I need to get all this shit down. You don't understand. I've got like five things going on. I've got two albums. I've got this thing. You need to go. Oh, fucking hell. You don't understand. Going. And then all the way back to, I can't fucking move. And then all the way back up to, hey, but it's all right because everything's cool. And hey, next week I'm going to be fine. I'm going to do this plan. I'm going to go to this place. And then, <gasps> Fuck all. Have you felt this way? Say yes if you have. Okay. Now, here's the thing. You are a human being with a soul. And your soul and your mind live in the same house. You understand? What people need to understand, first of all, about mental illness is it is not ephemeral. It's fucking physical. Okay? Your brain is part of what? Your fucking body. So how is mental illness, which is a chemical deficiency in the brain, not physical? I don't know about you, but my experiences of depression have been 
profoundly physical. It's in your body, an emptiness in your chest. A pit opens up. Your body chemistry slows right the fuck down. Your motivation goes. You don't want to eat. Beautiful sunrise. You feel nothing. Nothing. Not, in my experience, depression isn't feeling bad. It's feeling nothing. So that's misconception number one. People will tell you, you know what, mate? I had that depression once. It was easy. I don't know what you're fucking worried about. It was easy, right? I was depressed. I had a kick about with the lads. <laughs> and I was fine. Oh, that's cool. Good for you. People will say, oh, my God, I had that depression once. And you know what? It was all about my diet. <laughs> like, I found that if you stop eating, like, you know, organic kale, it's proven to release energy that connects you to the higher vibe. I saw it on a David Wolf page. You have no idea. That man's really... <laughs> No, no, Prince Ear is really keyed into some deep fucking truths. You don't understand. No, if you just, if you just walked barefoot on the grass, <laughs> realign your chi, your depression would vanish. I've seen people say, you know what, mate? You're not thinking right. Got to get your head right, mate. Got to get your head right. Sort your life out. Sort your thoughts, mate. You know what I mean? You've got too much negativity. You're dwelling on it too much. I, I had that depression once, and I, I went out, and I just sort of sorted myself out. You know what I mean? I had a little talking to myself. Gave myself good talking to. I was all right, son. <laughs> to all of those people, I have an unfortunate message. You weren't depressed. You were sad. <laughs> Do you know what? I was feeling sad, and then I went for a little walk barefoot, realigned my chi, and I felt better. Yeah, you were sad. That works if you're sad. You corrected your... If you, were, if you were fucking sad and you ate better, yeah, you're taking better care of your body. For sure. You'll feel better. You were sad. But clinically depressed people don't have that fucking choice. Okay? It's not a choice. And I have recently had an experience which, which, depression is a slope, right? You know it, I know it, everyone here knows it, it's this. You get to here, you might be able to just about pull yourself back. Whoa, 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 hey. No, I'm all right, I'm all right. Once you get to here, people, you're going down. That's a fucking fact, all right? Once you get to here, this is what's next. And I had this weird experience lately where Something happened, and I'm not going to discuss it because it's very private, but something happened that opened me up to a terrible, terrible, black, rank, deep, empty, hateful, self-destructive depression. And I felt myself going down. And then I came here. And I heard you. In all of your intelligence and grace and kindness and vulnerability. And I realized something, that I think we're going to be all right. Even fucked as things are. Okay, yeah, things are fucked. You think things are fucked now? You've got Brexit coming in eight weeks. Eight fucking weeks until you live in Brexit land. How you feel about that? You feel good about Brexit? Everyone feel good about the biggest far right power grab in living history? Because right, we got our country back. <laughs> I got my fucking country back. It's going to be all right. Yeah? It's going to be all right because. I'm my fucking country back, mate. You know what I mean? My fucking country back. Let me tell you something. Um, this was never the country of toxic, masculinity, sad, shitty little racists. Okay? Ever. Don't you ever fucking let them convince you of that. That's not who we are. That is not who we've ever been. 
This is the country that kicked the fucking shit out of the last bunch of fascists to come up here. When you see a fascist, you do the one and only thing. You punch them in their fucking mouth. When you see a fascist, you make them too fucking afraid to come outside. That's how you deal with fascism, because that's what they'll do to you. Especially all of you. You nice left-wing sensitive people. You're first. Make no mistake about it. You're first, okay? Alpha gets the wall. So. Look at the advantages I have. Look at my advantages for a moment. Look how lucky I am. I'm male. Uh, is that a privilege? I think we know it is. Uh, I'm white. <laughs> I just point out in case anyone hadn't noticed. <laughs> Easy to miss. <sighs> I'm able bodied. <laughs> able. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks. I got in this place without any fucking wheelchair ramp. Look, what are my advantages? What a wonderful set of advantages that is. How lucky I am. How blessed I am. My depression doesn't care. You can touch anyone. Any age, any race, any sex, any class, any gender, any sexual persuasion, you fucking name it. Depression is the one big unifier of us all. It's the one thing that puts us all together in one big category. So what do we do for each other? What do we do? Some of our depression... is us, okay? Some of it's brain chemistry. Your fucking brain isn't making the right chemicals. Get yourself some medication. But don't you ever mistake that medication as a replacement for soul work. Don't you ever think that citalopram is gonna take away your problems. Don't you ever think Tegradol is gonna stable away preventable child death. It's not. What it will do is it will give you the tools to do your soul work. You see what I'm saying? These are your tools, right? These, these chemicals, they are not a be When people say, oh, yes, Teleprime won't solve your problems, they're absolutely fucking correct. But if you're waking up every day and you can't get out of bed, guess what? You're not going to solve your problems either. So... We have two roots. We have medicine and we have soul work. Medicine is real fucking important. Very important. I am on 40... We're going we're gonna to do the fun let's compare our prescriptions game. <laughs> Ready? <laughs> I take 40 milligrams of citalopram per day. That is for clinical depression. I take 40 milligrams per day of a nice old school mood balancer called Tegretol. That's a mood stabilizer, you understand? As a result, I just got divorced and I have not been swallowed into the hole that I would otherwise have been swallowed into, you understand? Part of that is medication. Part of that soul work. Now, as depressed people, you have to understand, and as people who are vulnerable, you know, actually this, this applies to everyone, but I, I will talk particularly to people who have mental health issues, because like, that's kind of why I'm here. You know what I mean? Mind. We have real problems. Because you can fix yourself and you still live in a sick fucking world, boys and girls. I'm sorry to tell you, 
you probably already know. Fix yourself all you want. You could get to the point where you're the happiest, boldest, fittest, best version of yourself. You'll step out in the world and someone will go, oh, wanker. You'll be like, oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> how are you going to fix the world? How are you, you going to do that? How are you going to get to the point where it doesn't hurt you anymore? It doesn't scar you anymore. Soul work. People will let you down. Here, I'll sing you a little something that I wrote recently when I realized just how much better women do than men when it comes to sharing their fucking feelings with each other. So much cowardice and foolishness in what you say Can't take you seriously or temper tantrums drive me away Watch you go round and round in circles wondering what you'll do When how you waste your life away finally dawns on you Sleeping through the storm Or just dancing while the world burns on and on And the only thing for sure Is the punishments our children must endure Because you never became a man You never took a single solitary stand And if I'd learned my lesson And if I'd passed by guessing oh, My sin would be To never trust another man again Well, every time I reach my hand out to find me a brother, all I find is uh, opposition. Well, every time I reach my hand out to another, all I find is opposition. Should it really be this hard? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Should it really be this hard? Oh, I don't know, but all I get everywhere I go is opposition every night. Opposition from the wrong to the right. Opposition every day. Opposition in every way. Well, every time I reach my hand out to find me a friend, all I find is opposition. Over and over and over again, all I find is opposition. Should it really be this hard? I can't say. I can't say, should it really be this hard? Oh, I can't say, but every day, every day is more opposition. Every day, opposition in every way. I said opposition every night. Opposition from the wrong to the right. Well, every time I try to stand up, tall, I feel a sin and oppress me. Can't move forward for the wall against me. Pressure on me, feeling imperceptibly forever like emo jeans put upon your testy. <laughs> Some of them jealous of the way God bless me because I make beats, sing, play keys and MC. All the better little fucks on Twitter. I'll blow Gary Glitter for I let that vex me. <laughs> All this opposition. You better define yourself by that opposition. How are you going to do your soul work? All right, fine. Meds, easy. Go doctor. Doc, I'm sick. He's like, give me here's a fucking pill. Yeah, but doc, um, preventable like war and tragedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have a fucking pill. Have, have another one. Yeah, but doc, like um, the poverty and like the, uh, the the austerity and all the people that are dying and no, no, it's fine. Everything's fine. You're sick. Have a pill. It's fine. 
If you're not adjusted to that, you're sick. Have you noticed? Ever noticed that? If you respond to your moral call, hey, but isn't that fucking wrong? You're sick. Notice that? Those evil motherfuckers out there, they're fine. That's what sanity looks like. Amorality, racism, sexism, misogyny, misandry, toxic patriarch bullshit. That's normal. That's sane. That's what sanity is. Count me the fuck out. Count me the fuck out of that shit. Please. Where's the, where's the bit where I can sign that I'm, I'm done? Pfft, count me the fuck out. You know what I mean? I'm done with it. I'm done with it. We can't define ourselves by this stuff anymore. We can't. We've got to be good to each other. We've got to be kind to one another. And we have to listen to ourselves.